Okay, so enlightenment, um, which is going from the limited ego I, i.e. addiction to being in the, um, the Course talks about two things. I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me, and all my thoughts are meaningless. I mean, that's enough. If all your thoughts are meaningless, that's your head out of the way, uh, and don't give it any attention. In fact, everything it says is useless, and there is no thought in, in the ego that is ever useful. And uh, and uh, I'm not a body, I'm free. You're that which is beyond the body. You're the freedom that is not limited to a body. The body is just an object, like a table or something. It's not what you, you're not limited to being that unless you identify with it. As, as well as you're not limited to your thoughts unless you identify and say that these thoughts are my personal me and this body is a personal me. And by believing that, you become subject to being a limited thinker uh, in a limited body that's got all the limited thoughts of death and separation and being cut off. Um, so, so St. Francis, you know, I mean, it's kind of like focusing, even though in truth you wouldn't say the word focus. So the, um, but, you know, Hawkins, I mean, St. Francis and Hawkins, I like also what they say rather than using the word observer. Um, is that um, uh, St. Francis said what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So you should never look at the thoughts of the world or your body. Forget that. Your body is meaningless. Your thoughts are meaningless. And everything out there in the world is meaningless. So forget it. So then where? You could, um, you could say for easy languaging, uh, and as Hawkins said, you know, what, what you're looking for is before the thoughts, more intimate than thoughts, the body and anything out there in the world, which is externals, is uh, in, 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 within, before thoughts. Deep, so like thoughts are like um, the ocean or clouds. And before the formation or identification with clouds, there's the empty sky, there's a silence, there's a stillness beneath now, Hawkins wanted to clarify the, the error in Buddhism, which was not what Buddha originally intended, which is there's an error, error, error in Buddhism, which is like you find enlightenment between the thoughts. So if you think fast enough and hard enough, you'll, you'll get, become enlightened. It's not that. You have to be in this space before thoughts emerge. There's a silent field underneath the thoughts. So you're, you don't want to pay attention to thoughts because it will never end and you'll be limited forever. And you can't get to the place of no thought by thinking about it or being clever about it or looking for a gap. Because you've got your head looking for a gap between thoughts. It's never going to work. So forget the thoughts and go within and find an infinite stillness or a peace within before the thoughts. Forget the thoughts because they obscure the ever-present silence, the ever-present sky, the ever-present water. You're not a wave or a cloud or the thoughts. So actually paying attention to them is the worst possible thing or giving them meaning because you, you just carry on the addiction, you feed the addiction. To, um, and you don't want to uh, um, also make anything special in the world. That also leads to obscuring. You can't experience the silence if you're in your head making um, uh, chocolate cakes, uh, members of the opposite sex and TV meaningful. Because it's just a drama addiction and a projection of specialness, making everything the higher power. And so you can never experience the infinite presence that's always here. So it's if you want to use like loose languaging, you're focusing on the silence before thoughts, where thoughts are meaningless. You forget them, forget the world, forget looking out there. You're not looking out there. You're going deeper than even looking out there. Deeper, actually, than the experiencer and your addiction to um, experiencing and objects and thoughts. Uh, so they become, you know, it's like they're, you give up that they have any meaning or usefulness. And actually you find a deeper place, which is ever present. There's an ever present silence and things. If you let go, of, you're surrendering the addiction to thoughts, to objects out there having magical high power status or any meaning. And then automatically, as you stop making your, yourself, your thoughts and your body, and the world, anything in the world, 
your higher power, then automatically the, the infinite presence reveals itself. So you're letting go, actually, really. And then you recognize there's an infinite stillness, peace, and expansiveness that's always here. So Hawkins says that you can't find it with your thinking. You have to go before the thinking. That's an error in Buddhism, a uh, mistranslation. So you can't use your head to find silence. You forget the head, and before your head is the silence. Uh, so the, if you like, if you want to use um, incorrect languaging, you're, you're constantly focusing inside before the thoughts and then recognizing the stillness and, and holding the stillness. So you could, it's not correct, but you could say you just focus on the inner silence all the time. And uh, what will come up then is making your thoughts important, then you lose it. Making your body important, then you lose it making people, places, and situations important, then you, you lose it because your attention goes to limitation rather than just keep recognizing the infinite silence and, and, and having an allegiance to just staying in that the whole day rather than selling the, selling the silence out, selling, selling the infinite out for the addiction to thoughts, bodies, and things out there, which, you know, is a never-ending vicious cycle. Pro, as Buddha said, lifetimes and lifetimes of suffering because so whatever whatever you're attached to a partner uh, your body aging uh, the opposite sex validation whatever it is uh, it's an attachment and therefore at the end of the day it will cause suffering when you lose it so being in the infinite you can never lose the infinite it's always there ever present love infinite love and um, <clears throat> the trick is as you start to do your spiritual work uh, you start to get mystical experiences and don't let the ego say it's because you had a happy thought or you had an ice cream or it's because you just had uh, you had sex or something. Uh, that, that then um, disowns the infinite as the source of ever-present joy and, uh, and you actually <clears throat> make a, a lie to support the ego's basis that happiness comes from outside things, special things, higher power things which is just a projection of the ego, uh, which is in the ego's interest to keep its um, survival going for uh, lifetime after lifetime, which the ego was quite happy to do. So um, as you get the mystical experiences, because you're now recognizing the inner silence and you're staying in that, so you hold true to recognizing and being in the, the silent field, or you can call it the silent field, the inner stillness, um, the observer, that which is before all limitation and all thought and all bodies and all things and before all worlds and before all existence, that inner place prior. And you and that is the most important thing during your whole day and being in the infinite field rather than being in limited mind or limited phenomena. Then um, you start to get mystical experiences and Mystical experiences you give thanks are from, from the infinite grace, the infinite joy of ever-present infinite field, and they don't come from anything the ego would try and pretend it's from. Otherwise, you, you get trapped in, in illusions like, uh, I, I felt joy, your ego will want to do it. Actually, I felt joy because I had an ice cream 10 minutes ago. No, I felt joy because I was walking in the park. No, I felt joy because I saw my partner. Uh, that that instantly um, is a lie, which takes you back into bondage and, and away from the infinite field. So it's to love the infinite silence more than loving the addictions to thoughts and bodies and things. And, and those mystical experiences get more regular and more intense. Uh, and, you know, I've had white light spiritual experiences, uh, mystical experiences of bliss and, and um, ecstasy. And... Um, they're, 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 they're beyond, you know, they're not from the world. That's a mistake. And then they get more intense and more regular. And then eventually comes up the uh, idea that the ego will finally say, I am the source of your life. Uh, if you carry on, you know, your ego will dissolve, never to come back again. So you just, uh, I remember, remember Hawkins' words, all fear is an illusion, walk straight through. Don't, don't, don't buckle down to any fears of the ego. Walk through it, and that's the doorway to enlightenment. I mean, ever-present happiness and joy uh, without any limitation forevermore.
So, uh, yeah, so that's, it was great to hear everyone. I'll stop the video now um, and uh, press.